Hello and welcome to Module 4.1. Today we're going to be talking about lipids and how these lipids form together into plasma membranes. This is covered in our textbook in sections 3.3 and section 5. So if we look at our building blocks of the cells, here we have fatty acids and we're going to look at, uh, look at how fatty acids are turned into fats, lipids, and membranes. So what is a lipid? A lipid is actually a very broad term for a chemically diverse group of compounds that include fats, oils, waxes, phospholipids, and even steroids. And the common feature of these molecules is that they are insoluble in water. So these are soluble only in organic solvents. One of the uh, examples of lipids is the hydrophobic lipids on the fur of this cute little river otter over here keeps him protected from the elements and able to swim through the water easily. So what is a fatty acid? This is our unit that kind of builds up our lipids. A fatty acid is essentially a, a long hydrocarbon tail and a carboxylic acid head. And this is what's called an amphipathic molecule. Now amphipathic is a very important term for this class. This term means that it, the, an amphipathic molecule possesses both hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions. So the long hydrocarbon tail is going to be hydrophobic, and the carboxylic acid head is going to be hydrophilic. Of course, this carboxylic acid head is hydrophilic because it is polar. It has an oxygen here and here. These are electronegative elements that are going to create regions of polarity. And the hydrocarbon tail is hydrophobic because it's just a bunch of carbons in a row with hydrogens attached. And there is no polarity in this tail. So the top of the, uh, the fatty acid likes to bind to water, or to, excuse me, dissolve in water. And the back of the fatty acid does not want to dissolve in water. So we have both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions, and that is an amphipathic molecule. One of the main storage of energies as fats in our body is a triacylglycerol, also called a triglyceride. These are stored as droplets in the cytoplasm of some of our cells, and they're a concentrated energy reserve. In fact, if they were broken down, they produce six times as much energy as glucose. These are made up of a couple of different things. You have three fatty acids. Again, that's what we showed on the last slide. Remember, an amphipathic molecule. These are connected to a glycerol molecule that to form a triacylglycerol. So these three fatty acids you see here, one, two, three, these do not have to be the same fatty acid. And in fact, there are many t different types of triglycerides based on the differences in these three fatty acid tails. If you were to look at this molecule, it is amphipathic, as all lipids are amphipathic. However, the amphipathic nature of this molecule is very... Um, small. In other words, it's very difficult to dissolve this in water. It is very hydrophobic because the majority of the molecule are these long hydrophobic chains and the much in the minority is this ester group here in the glycerol connection. This ester group is not particularly polar, so what you would do, what, what results is a molecule that is for all intents and purposes hydrophobic. One other important thing to know about fatty acids is that they can be either saturated or unsaturated fatty acids. So saturated fatty acids, like this guy up here, this one is called steric acid, have hydrocarbon chains with single bonds only. There are no double bonds in this molecule. Therefore, it is saturated with hydrogens. So the term saturated is talking about hydrogens. There is no way to fit any more hydrogens on this molecule because there are no double bonds. Again, the region here is the non-polar hydrophobic, and the region here is the polar hydrophilic. If you have unsaturated fatty acids, these can have one or more double bonds. Here we have something called cis-oleic acid, and you see here 
there's a double bond in the hydrocarbon chain. Now cis, the term cis means that both hydrogens are on the same side of the hydrocarbon chain. And this results in, the, in a kink in the hydrocarbon chain where it is not straight, it has sort of a V shape, upside down V shape to it. If you have a trans uh, bond here, trans means the hydrogens are on opposite sides of the carbons, then you still have a straight molecule. However, this trans oleic acid is still unsaturated. And it's unsaturated because this double bond is not allowing a hydrogen to be here or here. So this molecule is not saturated with hydrogens, therefore we call it unsaturated. This is important because uh, molecules like cis oleic acid when they have a kink in them, behave much differently inside a cell membrane, as we'll see soon. And finally, the most important molecule in our discussion of cell membranes is a phospholipid. A phospholipid is a molecule with two fatty acids. That's down here. Again, remember these are nonpolar hydrocarbon uh, chains that are hydrophobic. And they're connected via a glycerol backbone, that's up here, with those ester groups like we saw earlier, similar to a triacylglycerol, except with only two um, nonpolar hydrocarbon tails. And then there's a phosphate and one of two chemical groups up here. Those two chemical groups are either choline or serine. So what we have in this molecule is a very hydrophilic head region. Hydrophilic because we have a couple of ester groups and we have a phosphate which is quite negatively charged as well as an R group which is also polar. We call this whole region the glycerol, the phosphate, and the R group being choline or serine, the hydrophilic head. This is polar, it likes to bind with water, or it likes to be near water, it's hydrophilic. We call this region down here that are our hydrocarbon tails, the hydrophobic tails. And this molecule makes up the majority of our cell membrane. So when we put phospholipids into water, they spontaneously aggregate to form bilayer membranes. See here, the one we're most interested in is the lipid bilayer sheet. And the reason that these phospholipids form these membranes is because they have a hydrophilic head, shown here by these circles. These guys want to interact with water, and they have a hydrophobic tail, and these guys don't want to interact with water. So the lowest energy state for these molecules is to come together and allow their hydrophobic tails to be next to each other in a hydrophobic environment, and their hydrophobic heads are on the outside interacting with water and this gives us the basis for a cell membrane. The final lipid that's important for our discussion of cell membranes is cholesterol. Cholesterols are defined by their um, rigid ring here that I've just circled uh, and these fit into the gap between the phospholipid molecules in our bilayer membrane that we were just discussing and these modulate its fluidity. Because this cholesterol is a short and rigid molecule, again rigid due to these ring structures here, cholesterol tends to stiffen the membrane, which makes it more rigid and less permeable. And we're going to talk about cholesterol and bilayer membranes in our next video. So thank you for watching.